Hello everyone. This video is going to be a, a practical investigation of the effect of uh, varying concentrations of alcohol on the membrane integrity of beetroot cells. Okay, so um, let's begin. What I have here in front of you is a series of test tubes with um, different uh, volumes of water already added and I've labeled the tubes with the eventual concentration of alcohol we're going to have in those tubes. So the next thing for me to do is to add the alcohol to make all the volumes up to five centimeters cubed um, and then we'll begin from there. So what I'm going to do now is I've got some 99% ethanol here and what I'll be doing is adding uh, gradually increasing volumes of this to my existing volumes of water to make it up to a final percentage of alcohol as labeled on the tubes that you can see there. So um, starting with the 10%, so if I want 10% of alcohol or ethanol in the tube um, with a final volume of 5 then I'm adding 0.5 mill of water, sorry, uh, uh, alcohol into there, okay, and for 20% I'm adding one centimeter cubed, for 30 I'm adding 1.5, you should see where this is going to go eventually, the highest concentration is going to be 70. Okay, and the final volume of all of them should be the same. 2.5 for 50. Three centimeters cubed for the final alcohol concentration of 60%. And finally, Finally, 3.5 for the 70%. Okay, and that should be that. Volumes should be the same, and we've got our varying concentrations of alcohol now, and we can begin our experiment. We're going to be looking at the, the effect that different alcohol ethanol concentrations will have on the, on the, on the fluidity, on the structure of the membrane and the way we're going to be doing that is um, well I'll explain that next okay so to continue the experiment what we are going to do is look at the that membrane integrity and the readout of membrane integrity is going to be the release of a dye from cells now what we're going to use is um, cells from a vegetable and you know the, the the important thing about this vegetable is that it is highly colored okay you can see there so we're going to use a beetroot and what we are going to do is take sections of this beetroot using a cork borer okay so one of these guys so the way this works is we put the borer through the beetroot and take it out like that. The other section goes in here and presses a section of the beetroot out. Okay, now in doing that, we get a section that has a very consistent surface area because of its shape. Um, the shape is very regular because we're using this device and then all we have to do is using a ruler cut the sections out uh, to specific lengths and I've done that right here so we've got a number of different sections of beetroot in here they, and, and because they all have the same length they all have the same surface area okay so that will then take us to the next part of the experiment. What we're going to do is put these pieces 
in the test tubes that contain the different concentrations of alcohol and we're going to look at the effect of that alcohol on how much dye is released from these sections. So what I'm going to do now is to add my beetroot pieces into the different solutions of alcohol of varying strengths. Remember, we have, we've just given it a quick rinse in water so that there's no dye on the surface of the cells because we are making the assumption that any dye that comes into the water is due to the rupturing of cell membranes. So we need to get rid of that excess, excess dye in the first place. Okay, and that's that, and we'll start a stop clock. Okay, so we'll stop that experiment there. The way we could do that is just by decanting the liquid from each tube um, into a separate tube. And leaving the beetroot piece there. So the important things here that we need to remember when we're doing this is first of all to because we want to see the effect of the, the the varying concentration of alcohol on on the release of the dye from the cells uh, we, we all we only need to vary the alcohol concentration as we've done in these tubes we want to keep all the other things constant so that means our beetroot pieces they need to be exact or as close to the same surface area um, and mass as possible and and we did that using the cork borer and the ruler and scalpel um, we need to make sure that other things are the same such as the uh, temperature and uh, other various things that could also affect the release of the dye from the beetroot pieces Okay, so the next stage is going to be to quantify um, the amount or, or the extent of the release of the dye. Um, remember, the whole assumption is that the more dye that's in these tubes, um, the more rupturing, the more damage there's been to the cell membranes. And remember that going across in this direction the percentage of alcohol was increasing in this direction so um, the idea is that the more alcohol there was or the, or the greater the concentration of alcohol in the water that surrounded the beetroot cells the more the membranes were opened up and the more dye was released now we're going to measure the extent to which that happened um, so that we can get a uh, some kind of graph out of this that shows us um, graphically uh, what happened. Okay, so we're going to use a very basic colorimeter over here 
and uh, the first thing that we need is some water as a reference okay and <clears throat> the water's in these cuvettes and I guess this is not going to work to reduce the volume there okay and water's going to be in these cuvettes and the first thing we do is we're using water as a reference now because we're using pinkish reddish type uh, colored uh, solution here we need to be on the opposite side in terms of our filter remember this colorimeter basically all it's doing is measuring the the light that's um, absorbed or transmitted through the sample and we're going to be working with absorbance and so what we're going to be looking at is absorbance in of a particular wavelength now our solutions are pink to red and therefore they're going to be absorbing more strongly in the green to blue region of the visible spectrum so accordingly we put that filter in there so we're really only looking at absorbance of that light okay um, right then so let's begin so the first thing we're going to do is set that filter up in there so that's all ready to go then we put the water in the cuvette put the cuvette in the colorimeter and take a reference reading okay and that's zero now next thing we do is prepare our samples in the same way and what I'll do is just take about two centimeters cubed of this liquid from our tubes and place it in the cuvette We are ready to rock and roll. So in we go with our samples. Cuvettes sometimes have a, a, a frosty side and a, and a more transparent side. So make sure that you're putting the transparent side um, in, in the root of, of the light. Now that might vary according to the colorimeter that you're using. So just take care of that. Put the cuvette in and take a reading 0.16. Then with the next, point one nine, point two one absorbance units. So I guess, I mean, the main thing here is we get the idea that this is the way that we can quantify the release of the dye from the cells and that the extent of release of the dye from the cells is to do with the increased presence of alcohol um, in the water that surrounded the cells. Okay, last one. So um, it might be useful at this stage to just recap on how we set this experiment up, um, what things we controlled and what things we varied um, in order to come to a conclusion about the effect of alcohol on membrane structure membrane integrity so easy thing to start off with we looked at what effect alcohol would have on on, on membrane structure by initially having a set of uh, solutions of alcohol in water 
and increasing the proportion of alcohol in the different solutions. So we went from zero, i.e. just water, to 70% alcohol. And in that alcohol, we placed some beetroot, um, assuming that the beetroot contains a dye and that that dye would be released if the mem membrane structure was negatively affected. Okay. So then how did we, what did we keep the same to keep out, to make our experiment valid? So the way we controlled for other things uh, that could affect the amount of dye, ultimately we were thinking, how do we make sure that it's only the alcohol concentration that's affecting the amount of dye that's released? And we did that by keeping other things the same. We kept the shape and the surface area and hopefully in that way the mass the same and maybe we should have uh, tested uh, or checked the mass of each piece beforehand but essentially we used the same cork borer for all the sections so and and we measured one centimeter lengths so essentially their surface area would be identical secondly the experiment was done at pretty much the same temperature although perhaps we could have controlled the temperature further by putting all the tubes in a thermostatically controlled water bath. Um, what else? Yeah, time. We made sure that the beetroot spent the exact same amount of time in the different uh, ethanol alcohol solutions. So it didn't. It, it wasn't like some tubes had more time uh, than others. That was another thing that we kept consistent. So. This is how, this is, these are the factors that we kept constant that could have also affected the, uh, the concentration of the dye in, in, in that water. Um, and yeah, and, and I guess improvements we could have made would possibly be to have repeats of each concentration. So instead of just having a single tube at each concentration, have three, perhaps four or five tubes at each concentration. So we get, we can average the readings instead of just having one absorbance reading for each concentration. That would have allowed us to identify any anomalies that would happen. In this case, we only had one, um, we only had one repeat. So we don't know if any of these results were anomalous or not. So that's another improvement we could have made, but that would make it more reliable. Um, things that we could do to control to make it so that the dye is only affected by the alcohol concentration, those things are what makes our experiment valid. Okay, I hope you found this useful and good luck.